Okay, so picking up from where I last left off, um, Ichigo's mask breaks then. Um, after obviously after Urukura comes back, surprise. Um, and um, I'm saying I'm a lot because I'm I'm losing steam a lot. Anywho, so. Uruukira comes back, breaks Ichigo's mask, Ichigo comes to, passes out a moment, and then he wakes up and he's like, oh my god, the hole in my chest, freaking out, whatever. And he sees, he, he can't even remember, really, because he's looking around going, did I do this? So obviously it's not like he's just like, oh crap, man, that was, that was like tequila night, you know, <laughs> he doesn't remember it at all. So, um, he's horrified. He looks at Ishida and sees the, the sword in his stomach, and he's like, "Oh my God! Like, what have I done?" And which I think I, I was actually shocked at Orihime's reaction when he looks at her. He goes, "Are you okay?" And she's like, she nods. I'm like, "Oh yeah, you're really okay." So as well, I mean, considering the fact that at, right after Ichigo had stabbed Ishida in the stomach, she says, "Why? Why am I always depending on him?" Orihime is horrified with herself. She is. She's completely and utterly ashamed that she has once again asked Ichigo for help. Because the entire reason she went to Hoegelander was to protect her friends, right? And she she didn't live up to that promise whatsoever. So she says she says herself, like, why why am I always the one who's looking up to him? Why am I always the one relying on him? She's ashamed of herself. That the dependency she has on Ichigo is so unhealthy for her, and especially concerning her desires to get stronger. She won't get strong when Ichigo's around because all she'll do is is oh okay, I'll just depend on him to, to, to protect me. I won't try to actually stand up on my own. When Ichigo died, when Ichigo got that hole in his chest, that was the deciding moment for Orihime to, to say, Enough is enough. I'm standing up for my friends, finally. She has leverage on Urukura. Honestly. I, I honestly do not believe Urukura would have the capacity to kill Orihime. And she doesn't even need to get a scratch on her. Just her standing up and saying, no, like I, I'm going to put a stop to this. That enough would be powerful enough to... That would have been really powerful. But she didn't do that. She broke down, and she asked a corpse for help. Simple as that. So, to sum up this wonderful Hueco Mundo arc, this Ichihime arc, which has not been Ichihime whatsoever. It's, it's been literally a continuous detracting of Ichigo and Orihime, and how they are unhealthy for each other. Orihime is not growing at all in her love for Ichigo. She was very, it was a very healthy love in, in soul society when she wanted nothing more than to protect him and to support him. But now, it's not. It's all dependency. It's how, it's all she worries about. I'll just, I'll just worry until Ichigo gets here. So she's not getting any, any stronger which she wants to. And Ichigo is striving to that level of insanity to protect his friends because it's just what he does. So it's not healthy for either of them. And so, like I said, to sum up this arc, to sum up this wonderful Ichihime arc of love and glory, Urukura is dying, and he looks to Urihime and says, Are you afraid of me? Why would he care? Why would he ask? Why would he even bother? Does, does he care? Urukura doesn't really seem like a person who would give a shit. But he does. Obviously, he asks. Um, and she says, no, I'm not afraid of you. And they're reaching toward each other. And he says this really romantic poem for, for an emo person like him. And basically sums it up as, your heart has always been in the palm of my hand. This wonderful, abundant Ichihime arc. Sarcasm has just been ended with Urukura and Orihime reaching toward each other. 
After, oh, after Ichigo screams about how he didn't want to win. Like that. I don't want to win like this. Freaking, because it's a bad thing that just happened, by the way, for those who weren't aware. And then, you know, if that enough wasn't like, okay, well, that's the end of that. Ichigo was like, I'm going to go save Rukia now. And just peaced out and saved Rukia. Which I thought was also really interesting. That, uh, the very moment Ichigo put on his mask, Rukia said, what's wrong with Ichigo? She didn't once think about, his mask is scary. She said his mask is different. What's wrong with Ichigo? She knows the man underneath the mask. Or he doesn't. That's the main difference. Um, I also have to say that, um, I'm not going to go into Ichigo and Rukia because from that point on there is no Ichihime. They haven't even, they didn't even see each other um, until <clears throat> Ichigo had his long scruffy hair. <laughs> he looked like a hippie. <laughs> um, which I thought was really, it, Orihime's reaction really struck, struck me when she was crying and she was like, I was confused about the hair but I knew it was you. Nell? Yuzu? Yeah, basically. That's exactly the way Yuzu would react. And that's exactly the way Nell would react. Little girls. Yeah, it was cute and everything, but... Orihime is not really acting like a woman who is five lifetimes in love with this guy. And understands him too, obviously, to boot. Um, she can relate to him on the level that she lost someone precious to her like he did but that's it and it's, it's a one-sided sympathy name of that chapter one-sided look at Ichigo this entire time nothing has changed he feels nothing you, if you're gonna look at Orihime, you have to look at both sides. How is Ichigo reacting? Well, he is, he isn't even, I don't think he is even aware, and if he's aware, obviously he doesn't give much thought to it, because, um, he invites her into his house, and she's freaking out, and he's like, it's not a big deal, you're my friend, you don't want to freak out. Ichigo's aware that she's attractive. He is. When Orihime, this is obviously after the time skip, Orihime says, are people following you? Um, I think people might be following. And he says, I think you'd be more apt to have people following you, anyway. Which means to say, you know, you're the attractive pretty girl. I think you'd be the one with stalkers. So, Ichigo's quite aware that he's attracted, that she's attractive. He's just not attracted to her. Um, and I de what irritates me the most about this ship, I mean, aside from what I've been going on for about an hour, um, it's mostly it's shippers, is when they, they try to argue things about boobs and ass. It's an insult to Orihime and Ichigo that you would have to go to such lengths to base your ship off of sex or sexual things. Ichigo and Orihime are much deeper than that. They are much more, they're just, they're more, they're more than that. Ichigo obviously doesn't give a crap about sex right now. When it's shoved in his face, he pays attention to it. Like when, when Yoruichi, oh, actually, um, this is one specific shipper in, in, in particular. I'm not talking to all shippers because I'm actually friends with a fair few, few, few Ichihime shippers and we were very good friends. One particular shipper was arguing that Ichigo is a boob person, distinctively definitely boob person because he um blushed at Yoruichi's boobs and blushed at Matsumoto's boobs or peeked at Matsumoto's boobs and then she proceeded to talk about Ichigo's joke with his boss about um his boss saying you should say something to my son so that he thinks that we're you know you're not interested in me or you're not going to hit on me and Ichigo says, oh, what, say something like, uh, I'm not interested interested in such an old lady? 
And she was just like, oh, look at that. Ichigo's not interested in only Roma and Rukia. Your, your history. I was like, grasping for strings so desperately is actually kind of funny. Um, so she said those things. And to which I proceeded to say, okay, well, if you're going to, if you're going to live and stand by the argument that Ichigo is not interested in older women in general, I mean, because obviously when he was saying, oh, what, like, uh, I'm not interested in such an old lady, that was actually a understate, that was an underlining, BT dubs anybody who is, you know, older than me, I don't like, by the way. That's definitely what he was doing. It wasn't, it wasn't just a, a joke between him and his boss. It was more than that. Yeah. Anyway, so if she's going to stand by that argument that he's not inter interested in old older ladies, then that completely nullifies her argument that Ichigo is a boob person because he blushed at Yoruichi and Matsumoto's boobs because they are damn old. Because she was, she was making an argument against Ichigo and Rukia. That's what I'm trying to say, because Rukia is old. Obviously, she is old, but she's not depicted as old um, in her looks. But also, if I said, okay, if you're going to get nitpicky, to where you're like, he was blushing at it, mm, her boobs, like, I was like, alright, I'm gonna get nitpicky. Ichiko was actually blushing at the vaginas. If you're gonna be that nitpicky, I'll be nitpicky. Because when Yodoichi first reveals herself, she sits before him and he stares at her and then he looks down and he blushes. Vagina, shot. She lifts her shirt, vagina shot, he blushes. Matsumoto's opening her blouse, he's like, uh, you can't do that. And then she lifts her skirt, and he's like, oh my god! So he's a vagina man. Actually. Honestly, if Ichigo was a boob person, I think he'd take more into consideration Matsumoto. And especially Orihime. When it comes to those things. Um, yeah, so. Stupid arguments. I mean, honestly, it... If I suddenly didn't have all the arguments for Ichigo and Rukia, I wouldn't just be like, oh, Ichigo and Rukia are definitely going to hunt together because Ichigo loves small titties. He is a small titty man. Which actually, I feel like, honestly, he wouldn't care. I feel like Ichigo just wouldn't care at all about boob size. It doesn't really matter to him. I, I think Ichigo is a, he is the antithesis of a material, materialistic person. It is everything within the person that matters to him, which I, oh, I just love Ichigo for that. Um, and I'm sorry, but Orihime is still being in love with Ichigo after 17 months of nothing is disappointing to me, very much so. Um, I was very excited when she first came on and it seemed like she was kind of, not over it per se, but like not in delved with the way she was because she was acting all cutesy and their stupid little three eyes and Ichigo was like what sliding down a, a, a rain pipe or a um a drain a water drain or whatever it is that she slid down I was like what are you doing I was laughing so hard at that I was I was cracking up I thought it was so funny it was so cute and then suddenly she's in his room and she's freaking out about being in his room and then she's she's once again, seeing Ichigo in an unrealistic way in her in her head when he invites her in. And if that wasn't clear enough, Taite Kubo drew right next to it a small... This is actually realistically what happened. And yeah, it was funny. I was laughing. I wasn't just like, oh, oh right here. Yes, point. Point for me. No, I was, I was cracking up, but I was also like, I think it's pretty funny that he was drawn so distinctively uncharacteristic from what he actually is. And once again, he was he was depicted in the suave, sexy, like, he was more sexy and suave than he was prince-like in this one, but it was also very uncharacteristic of Ichigo in general. Um, and then it shows him really just going, I want to go inside, it's not a big deal. Um, so I'm a little disappointed that Orihime is still in love with Ichigo, but I think that can, that can go somewhere, I'm hoping anyway, because... Right now, obviously, my opinion is not healthy in that relationship. And Ichigo still doesn't even know. He doesn't even care. He's blown her off, like, twice now, and it's actually kind of sad. Um, the, uh, the first time, uh, 
actually, maybe it's only one that he's going around. Um, but, I mean, the first time, obviously, he says to her, like, y you're pretty. Like, you'd have the stalkers. And yet, obviously, he's not like, mm, blush, blush, you're pretty. Only. Like, he, he's aware that she's attractive. He's just not attracted to her. But then she musters up all this courage. You can see her doing that. You can see her going, do you want to come with me to see Chad? And he, he interrupts her in that sentence in her attempts to be, you know, to invite him. And he's just like, no, I gotta go. And she's like, oh yeah, that was, that was a little, that was really fast of me, wasn't it? I'll just, I'll just tell him you say hi. And he's like, yeah, thanks. And he leaves. Like, he just, he completely blows her off. That's, that's so mean. Anyway, so obviously he doesn't really care. He's blowing, what are you doing off without a second thought? Um. So that's that. Um. One last thing. This is once again to that specific person, that specific Ichihime shipper. And I don't mean to be picking on people, but the friend, my friends who are Ichihime shippers, I've asked them, they do not like her either. She's, she's very narrow-minded, but one thing, like I said from the very beginning, bleach is metaphoric, very symbolic. It's underneath the lines. Um, and one thing that this particular person was so happy about was when Keigo decides to bring up Rukia and Ichigo gets uncomfortable and he's like, why do you have to bring up Rukia? Uh. And then Keigo says, well, aren't you lonely? And Ichigo says, no, like, like hell I'd be. And she was rejoicing. She was just like, listen to him. Like, he doesn't give a crap at Rukia. You know, like, um, and this is, this is pretty obvious. Okay. One, two pages before, Ichigo spent an entire half a page with just text reflecting on how Rukia had not come back in that 17 month time frame to visit Karakura. And not only that, but after saying, like hell I'd be, he goes on to say, I've always wanted a normal life where I couldn't see ghosts, yatta yatta ya. And obviously, that is completely and utterly untrue. As we see him struggling from that chapter on with the fact that he doesn't have powers, and then him going to the execution ple people, however you say it, the Forbringers. Yeah, oh, I can't remember that. The Forbringers to get his powers back. So, he, he talks about Rukia. But actually, like, hell, he, no, he's not lonely at all with Rukia. But he, but following that, he was lying about the not wanting powers. But he wasn't lying about, like, hell, I'd be, no. You can't take what Ichigo says literally. Like, uh, things like that you can't take literally. Anyway, I'm exhausted. I said what I wanted to say. My voice is giving out. I just want to sleep. I have to get up in two hours. I shouldn't sleep. Why did I do this to myself? Anyway, well, those who have actually watched all of these, which I highly doubt anybody will, um, good for you. And also, what are you doing with your life? Look at your life. Look at your choices. Copyright. Sassy your friend. Um, you just spent over an hour and a half, almost an hour and a half, actually, watching some girl talk about... Ichigo, Lukia, and Onikime. Well, I actually had fun talking about it. There's a lot more that I could say, but I'm so tired. It's 6.08 in the morning, and I I need rest. My eyes are, like, so heavy. So, thank you for staying with me this entire time. I really appreciate it. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to post more things later, because I do enjoy talking um, to people this way. Everyone have a fabulous